Okay, everyone. Well, we are back and we are very luckily joined by PFL standout Lance Palmer. So Lance, first of all, how are you and the family doing? Obviously with the fight being last weekend, how's your body holding up and how are you doing both mentally and physically? Everything's good physically. I didn't really take any damage in that fight that was lingering. Um, family's doing well. We're going to be able to hang out for Mother's Day and uh, this will be the second Mother's Day with our baby. So that'll be cool. And we have another one on the way. So I think it's uh, it's good to be home, but it goes by really fast. And I spend a lot of time away because we don't live in Las Vegas where I train. Uh, we live in Ohio. So the only time I really get to see them during fight camp is either on FaceTime or if I fly home for the weekend. So these uh, I'm only going to be here until probably for another week or week and a half, and then I'll be back out for the next fight. So we're just trying to make the most of our time here. But uh, on top of that, I'm working throughout the week, and my wife works full-time also. So it's it's a busy schedule. We just try to make time together when we can. Mm. Lance, I, um, I saw in your Instagram post, the other night about resilience and that quote you posted where when your guts are being torn apart from chaos and crisis when you want to quit everyone wants you to quit resilience is the dark drug that whispers to you keep going that mindset is that is that mindset is obviously what led you to becoming a two-time pfl featherweight champion was that mindset something that you developed in your college wrestling days or was it something that's always sort of come naturally to you um i mean the person that actually said that quote Mm. they're you know, they've worked with a lot of people like Kobe and Michael Jordan and stuff like that. But I feel like that mentality and the ability to move forward after a failure or a loss comes from wrestling because I've probably wrestled close to 10,000 matches in my entire life for wrestling and lost a good amount of them. I mean, I've won more than I've lost, but learning how to lose and learning how to accept it and move forward and kind of have a short memory and be able to take the good things from it and be able to learn from the bad things that happened as well. Um, I think that's the main thing that I have taken from wrestling and college and high school and just being able to overcome failure and, and move forward and be able to succeed after failure. That's the most important. A lot of people get discouraged and they quit right away or they just, they can't overcome it or they get so fixated on the losses that they just kind of hang around in that area. And you have to give yourself a little bit of time to, to reflect on that stuff, but then you have to move forward. It's not the longer you, you reflect on that stuff, it starts to linger in your mind. And then you start second guessing your capabilities. Yeah, for sure. So Lance, uh, obviously we know that you're a big family man. You've just kind of touched on it yourself and believe got another one on the, uh, another child on the way, uh, due for September. So a huge congrats to you for that. That's obviously massive. Um, have you found that having a family has changed the way that you will deal with a loss in terms of, uh, maybe your perspective on life and that there is more to life than fighting and that whilst losses, certainly they suck, no one wants to lose, but it's not maybe the, uh, the end of the world. There are things outside of fighting that can be more important. Well, since I've had a child and like, since we've had our little family, that's the first time I've lost. I mean, I've lost three fights in a row and it's only been since having a family. So that's all I've really known, unfortunately. And it's kind of shown me that there is more to life than just fighting. But I don't feel like my my desire to fight and desire to be a champion is gone. I've just had, you know, some unlucky events of fights over the last year, I guess you could say. And just haven't given... Like my last fight, my sense of urgency just didn't seem there to, you know, try and attack and go after the grappling and the things that I'm best at. And that's something that I've addressed right after the fight with my coaches. And that's something that I like today, Mark Coleman ran wrestling practice here in town. And I was in there wrestling with a lot of good guys uh, who were local guys who wrestle in college. So that's something that I knew that I didn't address as much, you know, due to injuries uh, in the last few weeks of this camp. But um yeah i mean i think i think having a family is family is always first and family is more important than anything else but i still have that desire and that drive to compete so that's why i sacrifice not being with my family during training camps and things like that if i 
if I didn't feel that I still had it in me, I probably wouldn't do it because it's a lot of, there's a lot of ups and downs outside of fighting that go with the sacrifice of being away from family. Mm. Lynch, you truly have one of the most decorated um, NCAA records in history, in our opinion. You may completely dominate on route to becoming a four-time um, NCAA Division One All-American with, you know, like, you know, wins over, over Burroughs and Bubba Jenkins and Molinara and guys like that. What led you ultimately to transition from wrestling to mixed martial arts and not continuing that route of going straight through wrestling? Well, it's funny that you say that because I was just telling Mark Coleman today, he was the reason that I got into fighting. I was still wrestling in college and he came in the room because he wrestled at Ohio State as well. And he was just in there. He was actually giving us a speech after practice. And I talked to him after the speech and he was like, Palmer, your wrestling style is perfect for MMA. You need to get in the cage once you're done. And I was like, I was a sophomore in college. I was still focused on trying to win two more all Americans, try and be a national champion. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Like I was like, Coleman's crazy, but like, he's, <laughs> that's how he is he's just straightforward. But yeah. I was like, this guy's nuts, but I love his style. And I just kind of, after I got through my senior year, uh, Mike, the who's really close with uh, Coleman and all those guys, he was a sponsor for like, it was called cage fighter at the time. And, Core Synergy back in the day. He sponsored like DC and a bunch of those guys. And he was like, man, you need to really get out there and uh, start training to fight. And he linked me up with uh, Uriah Faber, who had called me right after NCAAs that year. And it was just like, all right, I'll come out and train. And the, actually, the very first live fight I saw was Uriah versus Aldo when he got his leg tore up. And I was mm. like, even though that fight didn't come out like you wanted to against uh, Aldo, Mendez was on that card. Benavides was on that card. It was in Sacramento. I was like, man, this would be a great team to train with. And uh, everything from there was history. That was kind of how I got involved with Team Alpha Male and that connection with Coleman and uh, Mike DeSabato and Uriah. I think they were sponsoring Uriah at the time, and that was the connection. But that was kind of what sparked it all was the first conversation with Mark Coleman when I was in the wrestling room. Yeah. For sure. So Lance, as you have such an accredited wrestling background, other than the most obvious being chain wrestling, what is the most underutilized wrestling technique or approach in MMA today? I would say the most underutilized is Greco-Roman style wrestling, mm. like upper body, body lock type stuff. It's not, I mean, some guys use it and some people do really well with it, but it's a very tricky thing because if you don't know how to use upper body wrestling, you can get thrown on your head just as easily. So it's something people are kind of uncomfortable with too. And a lot of people don't utilize it, but it's definitely something that's, I don't utilize enough either, but I feel like even in my last fight, I got pushed to the cage a little bit. We were in an over under and then I squared them off and circled off. And even though it's something simple, a lot of people are just content with sitting against the fence and that's how you lose the round. But even just an over-under or double-unders or a body lock to get off the fence is that's something that a lot of people don't really use enough of to to have that sense of urgency. So I, I would say Greco-Roman style wrestling is probably the, um, the most underutilized as far as all the types of wrestling goes. Mm. Lance, you were, as we touched on before, you know, in, regarded as one of the toughest brackets ever for you know, NCAA in 2008 at 149 with, like we said, with matches with, with Metcalf and Burroughs and, and Jenkins and guys like that. Would you say that still ranks as one of the toughest forms of athletic competition that you've experienced in your, in your athletic um, career? 100%. I think the, just that season alone, I think that season is probably still regarded among a lot of, I mean, not just us who were in there, but a lot of people as the toughest weight class in the history of the NCAA. And it's just because everybody that placed top eight in that bracket and then people who didn't place were either national runner-ups or national champions at some point in their college career. And that was, I mean, it had to be one of the most stacked weight classes ever, if not the. So I think that that's, I mean, that was that whole season was one of my toughest seasons ever for anything I've ever done in my life. And it was, uh, when we go back to resilience, that was one of those things where I had actually, like I had a a streak of losses throughout that season. And, and then we went to Minnesota and I wrestled, uh, Dustin Schlater, who was a national champion a couple of the year before that. 
and I'd actually pinned him in the second period in front of his crowd, and he was ranked number one or two at the time, and it was a huge win for me, and I had, uh, I, like you guys were saying, I had wins over uh, Ryan Lang, who was, uh, you know, he was a national finalist the year before that, wins over Bubba, wins over Burroughs. I mean, there was a, there was a lot of ups and downs during that season, so the, the word resilience is a direct correlation to that season. I mean, you're going to have losses. It's just how you come back from it. And it's really your mentality and your mindset of how you want to finish. Cause you can either lay down and give up or you can just get back on the horse and ride into the next one, which is what I got to do on June 24th. For sure. And that kind of leads into our next question. And you touched on it a little bit there. Do you feel that the grind mindset that comes from wrestling is just so different from every other form of martial arts or every other form of combat sports that it gives you and other wrestlers an advantage in MMA, whether that's in the training or actually competing? I think it does a lot just because I mean, I know there's some guys who have fought a few Muay Thai fights in one night in Thailand and things like that, but the actual grind, and I know those, you know, you beat up your body in Muay Thai a lot because it's just back and forth, back and forth the whole fight. But as far as, um, as far as wrestling goes, I don't think there's anything that really takes a toll on you physically oh, and no. mentally. And especially if you're like, if you're winning all the matches, you still have five or six matches against the toughest guys to win the yeah. tournament. Whereas if you lose early on, you have seven or eight matches in a row just to get back into that third and fourth place match. So that's, that's what resilience is. It's whether or not you can come back because it's not always about who's the best in those scenarios after you lose. It's about who's the toughest and who can mentally not forget about the loss, but put it behind them and move on so they can perform their best in the, the rest of the tournament. Lance, um, Quick one on striking. Was striking relatively easy for you to pick up, or did you find that that you know that your wrestling background, whilst you know giving you natural um, athletic benefits, did it make make any technical sides to striking more difficult to learn, or did you not really face that? Was it pretty easy to pick up? My wrestling stance is a left foot lead, and my fight stance is right foot lead. So that was a, the op and. You know, I'm southpaw on fighting, but I'm left leg lead in wrestling, so it's just different there. That that was the only thing that was kind of tricky at first, setting up my from opposite lead stance and things like that, because my wrestling come is now I drive off my left foot to sh mm -hmm. the there, but the striking itself is was not very difficult to pick up. I mean, it's. It's one thing to be able to let go and let loose in the fights and just throw my combos. And that's something I'm still working on is throwing more punches than one or two punches at a time. But I feel more comfortable in there with my striking, but I can't let that take away from still using my wrestling. So that's mm. something that I'm trying to, even at this stage of my career, I still feel young in that part of the learning phase. So it, I think feel like that's good because I still feel like I'm learning every day in the gym. Mm. Mm. Lance, um, your entire career has been fought in the States. Does that, you know, obviously all, in, all you know, most of the PFL, all the PFL fights are, um, are located in Texas and, and places like that. Does it ever interest you to compete internationally before you retire or, or is that, that ship kind of sailed now? Yeah, I would love to. I mean, obviously there's other organizations that are, you know, one FC is in Singapore and they kind of hang around there, but I think they're doing a fight in the U.S. soon. Um, they're like... PFL, I don't think will ever go outside the U S just because this is where they're based. And I think this is obviously they use fighters from all over the world, but I think the platform that they try to emulate and the things that they do is better set in the U S for mm -hmm. them as far as a production goes. But I mean, we see Bellator all over the world. We see the UFC go all over the world. It would obviously be really cool, but, um, I think there's going to be some plans for uh, PFL to leave the U.S., so mm -hmm. um, that's something to look out for too. Mm -hmm. Lance, look, man, last one from us. I know you've given, you, you've given us heaps of time, so I really appreciate it. Look, No problem. We've, we've always asked fighters in the past, um, and we'd love to know your answer as well. I've seen you love your cars, man, and 
And that seems like a real passion and hobby that you've got also with your patios and, you know, landscaping business as well, which I think is really important to have outside of fighting, you know, have, have, a, have a, um, a release, something that you enjoy outside of fighting. Sure. Um, are there any other passions or hobbies you're really into while you're away from fighting? Um, honestly, like, I love playing golf. I love hanging out with friends. I love drinking beer, hanging out with the boys. Like I'm just, just like, I like to do regular guy things. I feel like it's important to do that just for your mental health. I mean, I love cars and like, it doesn't have to be expensive cars. I'm into classic cars. I'm into all different types of cars, but my dream when I was a little kid was always to own a Lamborghini. And that was kind of one of the main reasons why after I was able to do it financially, I was like, man, even if I ha only have this car for a couple of years, I can enjoy it and really live my dream from a hobby standpoint yep. and, and that was kind of the reason behind that and have i've had a dodge hellcat red eye before that and i had a lot of fun in that car going to the drag strip and it just like things like that that still give you adrenaline rush but outside of fighting it's like my life has always been an adrenaline even with mm. wrestling so i would say you know golf movies like i'd love my wife and i going out to mm. nice dinners or going to a movie together or just going walking around the mall shopping like spending time with the people i love is probably the best thing but like my brother and i love to golf together when we have time whenever yeah. i'm in town so i think it's just like you don't get that time with people like once your time is done here on this earth it's done for good so mm. you have to enjoy it with the people you love or the people you care about whether it's friends family whatever it is you have to you have to embrace that and enjoy it i think i'm very serious about what i do with fighting and with work but if you don't enjoy the things outside of it time passes you up real quick so yep. i think that's why it's like buy the car and go out with your friends do this do that go on that trip do you know the things that are going to bring you joy because if you're if you're just too busy trying to save up all your money your whole life you can't take it with you when you die so Yep. that's that's the main thing for me is obviously not being done with your money but you got to enjoy yourself you only live once and uh my main hobby is just enjoying life i like to laugh i like to joke with people i like to have a good time i mean that's my main thing because life is too serious you just got to have fun and you know obviously stuff like this is what is fun wow. to me so <laughs> that's awesome i mean it's it's one of my i mean one of my favorite things i've ever done outside of winning whether it's winning wrestling or winning fights is like being able to go to this dealership and purchase the car that I've wanted since I was a little kid. I mean, that's like little, maybe a little goal for somebody who doesn't like cars or this or that. Like my wife isn't into cars at all. Mm. So she doesn't understand it except that it's super expensive. And she's like, you don't really need that. I'm like, yeah, but I don't <laughs> need a lot of things. <laughs> like you don't really need a lot of things in life, but yeah, yeah. you yeah, can yeah. always sell it. So I just like enjoying yeah. it, man. But that's about it. I just love I love uh, spending time with people I care about. I think at the end of the day, those are the only people that are going to be there for you, win or lose. So that's how you got to look at things. 100%, man. Well, look, Lance, we really appreciate your time today, brother. We'd, we'd love to chat to you again after you um, after you get the win on, on June 24th, man. And um, we really Heck appreciate yeah. your time, man. Heck yeah. I'm hoping to get a finish. I don't even care who it is. I mean... I'd like I'd like to fight Shaman Marias, but mm -hmm. we'll see who they give me. I think I fought everybody else that won on that mm -hmm. card besides him. So he's been around. Like, like we were in World Series of Fighting together back in the day, and he never fought me then because he got brought into the UFC. And he's fought some of my old teammates like Feely and guys like that. But I'd like to fight. I'd like to fight him. I think he's a he's a tough fighter. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like that'd be a good fight for me. So. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll see what happens though. We didn't get our new matchups yet, but yeah. that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it, man. Appreciate your time today, brother. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for, uh, switching out the days and times nah, for me. No problem. Man. Stuff got all, crazy. Oh, good, man. All good. <laughs>